every sports team, there's a clock ticking, always ticking, about getting to the top. The Red Wings had been to the Cup Finals in 1995, and that ended up well dreadfully. But they were back in the championship round for the second time in three years in 97. And it was time. I'm John Keating. The Cup Finals opened on Fox Television that year, complete with Cletus the Robot and the glowing puck and the great Doc Emmerich and John Davidson. The Philadelphia Flyers never knew what hit them. The first two games and first two wins were on the road at their place. In game one, the Wings never trailed, but it was a gutty effort to open the Cup Finals. The Cup is over 100 years old. You win and your name goes on it, but so does the name of your city. Will it be Detroit or will it be Philadelphia? Will it ever be fun finding out? Good evening, everyone. Along with John Davidson, I'm Mike Emmerich. The biggest crowd in Pennsylvania hockey history to see the biggest team in NHL history. And the biggest line is back together. The Legion of Doom, centered by Eric Lindros with Leclerc on one side and Mikhail Renberg on the other side, back together. They're huge. They average 220 pounds. Now, Terry Murray, the flyer coach, he told us he's going to play Lindros a lot. And that means double shifting. And for Detroit, the dilemma is, can you play one line against him, or what do you do? Vladimir Konstantinov is the guy who's been against him in some murderous play during the course of the regular season in just the two games they played. Interesting how Lindros sees Konstantinov. He just might be the best. Uh, he uh, he made a comment. Yeah, he's, he's made comments all the time about if you're not cheating, you're not trying. And uh, all right, that's uh, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be it's gonna be a, a real a real tough battle. Um, it's going to be a little cat and mouse. It's, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be interesting. Detroit had good teams, but got swept in 95 and bounced by Colorado last year. They made a philosophical change. Yeah, they got a lot bigger. When you look at a guy like Brendan Shanahan, you've got size, you've got defensive ability, you've got offensive ability. Listen, with Eric Lindros going to get double shifted a lot early, Detroit can't match up with just one line. They're going to go with two or three different lines, a couple of sets of defensemen, and try to wear down Eric Lindros. Well, the Red Wings start. Chris Draper giving up five inches and 50 pounds to Eric Lindros, along with Maltby and McCarty. LeClaire, Lindros, and Renberg, the Legion of Doom line is out for the start of this Stanley Cup final series. Lindros tried to reach that, did get it. The pass over near Larry Murphy. Tangles for a moment with LeClaire and swept it back down near Hextone. No icing on this is Yanni Ninema, the Finnish rookie, plays it along to Peter Svoboda, who is rammed by McCarty. So now taken by Slava Fatisov and given on to Larry Murphy. Murphy, the veteran defenseman, gave it up to Svoboda, and the Red Wings make a change in lines. Joel Otto's pass, blocked by Doug Brown, but back down for Otto. Again, the Red Wings move. Kozlov over for a shot by Brown that's deflected by Paul Coffey and Ben in front, and Fedorov couldn't get much on it. Fedorov again, and he angled one out in front. Kept alive at the point, Konstantinov moving on in with a shot pass stopped me by Hextall. Still trouble, and Hextall this time will seal it up. There was some concern on behalf of Detroit saying, listen, Philadelphia, when the game starts, they want to dump the puck deep, and they want to hammer the defenseman of Detroit. Detroit said, you know, that does concern us, but let's think about this for a moment. We're pretty good at doing the same thing. Let's get the puck deep, try and really take it to the Flyers early. So the philosophy was the same with both coaches going into the game. I think two shifts here, through the first minute, four seconds, Scotty Bowman's club looks very relaxed and very businesslike, and have forced to play in the Flyers' zone over the first one minute. On merit, the officials are chosen for games like these. Bill McCreary, Ray Scapinello, Dan Shakti. The standbys, Terry Gregson and Gord Brossaker. The replay official, Jim Doyle. Off-ice officials are from New Jersey. And the supervisor is Dave Newell. Both teams healthy. Two great teams. First time they've ever met in the playoffs. And the question is, who will dictate the terms in these opening minutes? 120 has been played. Big shot by Shanahan, blocked by Hestall. 77 miles an hour as Fox Tracks is in operation. Igor Larionov taps it along. Dinah Zubris, the rookie for Philadelphia, on to Brindamore, but that shanked off Dale Howard Chuck, and the Red Wings started back. So Slava Fatisov back on for Shanahan. We did not see Konstantinov start against the Lindros line. Trouble there for Howarchuk. Now it is Renberg feeding it on back for Coffee. Coffee finessed it through Brindamore. 
We have two teams here that love to send their defense in on the offense. Now, as you saw on that play, it was Paul Coffey getting his first shift. He got in real deep, stopped at the top of the crease, and then paid. When the puck got there, he got just hammered to the ice. You see Renberg skating very well early in this game, moving the puck here to Coffey, who can't handle it on the backhand side of his stick. Now, as the puck goes into the corner, Coffey will establish himself right in front, and he'll wait. The Red Wings were caught on a change, haven't recovered. Brindamore gets the puck in front. Now watch Coffey. Man, did he get squished and hammered to the ice. And Bill McCurry, uh, who's a good referee in letting players play, let them play. Scotty Bowman wants an emotional high at the start. So far, he has it. Samuelson a shot, and that ricocheted the corner. Knifed away by Sandstrom, on back to Samuelson. Another shot, and that's whipped wide. Fed out in front. Good denial by the defensive work of Nicholas Lidstrom. Eiserman's pass is away from McCarty. Hexed on up his goal, sweeps it around from the waiting McCarthy, and it's just flown on back to neutral ice. So we saw Lindros win a big faceoff now clean in the Detroit zone. Detroit had a 6 o'clock meeting tonight talking about faceoffs and the tendencies. Hextall waiting. Eiserman, if he takes it, it's an illegal play. He does, so it is. Good read by Ron Hextall. He could have played the puck. He knew that if Eiserman touched it, the faceoff would be back outside the zone. A real good read by the very calm Ron Hextall. Years ago, he was one of the more superstitious people in all of hockey, but Hextall has settled right down, very businesslike, very relaxed. Now, Mike threw two shifts of Lindros. He has faced Draper one shift and Iserman one shift. Lindros won a faceoff, which led to a partial scoring chance by Philadelphia in the Detroit zone. Detroit wanted the emotional high. Looks pretty good. Philadelphia wanted to establish four checking. Have they done it yet? Not yet, but this is their fourth line on the ice right now. Cordic, Lacroix, and Drews uh, against the big line of Koser, Maltby, and Draper. So Koser gets his first shift. Let's see what the tough guys do here against one another. Bouncing puck away from Bruce, knocked back out by Lacroix. Slava Fatisov, 39 years of age, back on to Konstantinov, then to Fatisov again. The veteran of three Olympics for the Soviet Union, as it was known then, lays it back across for the carry by Draper. Blast one that is knifed down. Draper tried to reach for it, but it scooped away over to Peter Spavota. Flipped it along further. Konstantinov was checked by Lacroix. Now Philadelphia just did a great job with Konstantinov and Fatisov regrouping. Not shooting the puck in, but going backwards and regrouping. The Flyers didn't get sucked in. They played it really well defensively. Bob Rouse to play on defense. Gives it across. Maltby scaled it off the glass and back out. This could be the hitting line. Flat on the right side. Injured two Rangers, Jernander and Brian Leach, with some good hitting. Flat on the right side. Podin on the left and Joel Otto in the middle. The late Roby gone line, all from Minnesota. Rouse able to drop it back in. Turning with it is Chris Terrian. Now here's the Detroit system. The left winger's back. Now you see the puck going through the middle, and Detroit cut it off. No first pass completed. It's called a wet left wing lock by Detroit, and it worked for a moment. Philadelphia now changes. Desjardins just popped the man in the face with his stick. That's Kozlov. Billy McCurry let it go. Kozlov just now has gotten to the bench and been replaced. Meanwhile, the puck taken by LeClaire. The Legion of Doom is back out there. LeClaire and Renberg, the wingers for Eric Lindros. LeClaire trying to get in, but no room for him. Meanwhile, it's fed on back by Shanahan and quickly across to Larry Murphy. Brought on from Toronto late in the season. Murphy played that one back in, and Samuelson put it off the glass and back out. On now to Lindros. Got it for Paul Coffey with LeClaire breaking. Coffey flipped one, knocked down by the defense off of Murphy. Jammed back and fanning on it. Lindros, Coffey a shot, and that went off Igor Larionov. Now Desjardins a shot off of Vernon. Fed on back, Desjardins again. 71 miles an hour, it's picked up by LaPointe, trying to flip it further, no room, Renberg blocked it back, LaPointe winds it the other way, Sandstrom tipped it. Third different line combination Lindros has played against, the common denominator, Lindstrom number five, Larry Murphy, who has the puck now, have been on the ice every shift that Lindros has been out there. Darren McCarty with a pass on to Iserman, the captain of the Red Wings, Iserman with no room, and it's loaded back out. 
deafening roar here at Core State Center. Changing on the fly, important now, Mike. There's no whistles here, no stoppages. The coaches and their players have to be very sharp on the bench. Matisoff took out Brindamore. Meanwhile, the pass comes across. Thomas Sandstrom lays it back in. Sandstrom put a stick right up in the helmet of Shell Samuelson. Sandstrom will get a reaction, a retaliation penalty here. That penalty right in front of the referee. The touch by Vernon, the first power play to Philadelphia. From high sticking at 550. Power play will go to Philadelphia. Big Shell Samuelson, a former teammate of Sandstrom, banged him with a stick, hit him, and then watch Sandstrom stick right, right up across the helmet twice in front of Bill McCurry. So Sandstrom sits. Watch Lindros on draws. Clean. There it goes. Need him up to Brindamore. Brindamore shooting, and that one blocked away. Mike Vernon is presented with a tremendous challenge. He's 5'9", and he's going to have some oak trees in front of him on this power play. Said he said he'd look through the legs, Mike. <laughs> Not around or over top of the players. He'll look through the legs. So we'll watch for him to be scrunching down as Coffey missed for Brindamore, but got LeClaire. LeClaire dumped it along, and Larry Onoff trickled it out, and on comes Shanahan. Coffey trying to cut it. Shanahan moving in. Shanahan didn't see Lindstrom in behind him. The defenseman had moved up. Big, big save by Ronnie Hextall. 40 seconds gone on the power play. And this one knocked away. And now it's Mobby and two on the goalie. And then it's a Draper to Mobby. He scores! A shorthanded goal. Second shorthanded goal in the playoffs for Detroit. The second by Draper. Hextall had no chance. Coffee. Along with the fans of Detroit, all oh, the fans are celebrating at Joe Lewis. Coffee and Ninema had been exhausted. They've been skating back, chasing pucks twice now. Look at this tic tac. Wow, quick pass here. Ronnie Hextall could only spread out and hope. It was Maltby who scored. I apologize. Second shorthanded goal for Detroit in the playoffs. A fine passing play in Detroit going right at Philadelphia with speed. Right at the defenseman of the Flyers and one other Detroit. Maltby's fourth, his first shorthanded goal. Draper gets the lone assist. And the deafening roar is now a rumble of concern. Still power play time to Philadelphia, but the Flyers have been outshot four to one. Two short-handed attempts. Uh, two of these shots short-handed. You're absolutely right. Now, here there seems to be a problem with the clock and how much time is left on the penalty to Thomas Sandstrom, who's in the box. It will be reviewed upstairs and then told to Bill McCurry. I believe that's what the problem is. They, they want to know what time the penalty was, how much time's on the clock, and make sure that that coincides with the amount of time left that Red, the Red Wings have to kill. Now Lindros was on the puck here, and you see Maltby strip him. That caught both defensemen flat-footed. Draper read the play. It's a two-man breakaway. Lindros got stripped by Maltby, and watch Draper's pass back, which in turn got Hextall out of position, and a great finish. Boy, that's a nice play by Maltby. Maltby and Draper worked together killing penalties, and they stripped Eric Lindros, and it's 1-0 Detroit shorthanded. How much of a stunner will this be? The next minute 12 will tell some of it. Mike, does this Detroit team look different than what we saw two years ago when they went up against New Jersey in the cup final? It was like men against boys in that series. Here, Detroit looks so much more mature, so much more ready, so much more poised. Really confident. Here's Zubris moving in, hooked out a bit, jammed it behind, turning as Renberg, checked by Rouse. At the half board, Zubris. Pestered by a couple. Let's get back to Desjardins. Off of Coffee and again back out. And so Coffee will drop back. And we talked to Terry Murray before the game about Detroit's penalty kill. He said they're good and you can't find a weakness in it. So we know what to expect. We've looked at tapes, but the Detroit forwards here are just flying. Their penalty killing forwards are just going after the puck no matter where it is. Iserman and Fedorov are the penalty killers now. In back, Konstantinov along with Nicholas Lidstrom. It's rattled around behind Mike Vernon over to Desjardins. Desjardins right. tried to flip it through. It's knife behind the Lindros. Lindros out to Nidema, and it's a Watch the great play by Brindamore. Watch him right here pick up his man. He holds 
Lindstrom's stick right there. So Lindstrom can't get to the puck. It buys a little time. Now the Flyers work from behind the net. Jam play as Needham had moved in. And there's Lindros. The puck's in the crease. Lindros is out. And the puck is over the goal line. It's being reviewed. I believe Lindros went into the crease after the puck had gotten there. Ryan Burke, Dave Nonis, everybody looking up at their monitors to find out if the goal itself on the power play is okay. Now here's the goal crease. The puck is in the crease. It's in the crease. Lindros is allowed to go in after the puck's in the crease. It's vacated. The Flyers are vacated, and this goal is scored. So what a wild power play this is. The Flyers tied up at one after giving up a shorthanded goal. He jammed that in. It looked like almost a Red Wing stick that jammed it in, Mike. Quite did. There's Needham's shot stopped by Vernon. He can't find the rebound. Lindros is there. And then someone at the top of the goal crease jammed the puck in past Mike Vernon. Another look at it. Watch right at the front in the middle. Somebody stick right here. Ah, oh, it may have been Brindamore from the other side who actually started the whole play with a nice move on, on Lindstrom by holding a stick and playing time. We're tied up at one. So the stun did not last very long. The game is tied at one. Seven minutes and 50 seconds have been played here in the first period. It's been eventful. Roughed up on the corner board. The puck came for Podine, shot that's tipped aside on the split save with the stick by Mike Vernon. It is Podine flipping it back in. Hasn't gone all the way yet. No matter. The Flyers are in the midst of a change. Unmolested, it's Larry Onoff. Now hooked at, but able to escape. Desjardins turning. Four shots apiece. Half of the Red Wing shots have been shorthanded, including a goal by Kirk Malfi. But now Picked up and circled around behind by Podine. Tried to jam it to the front, could not. Hooked along further by Aaron Warren, the first year defenseman out of the University of Michigan. But it's back down to Coffey. Hands across to Samuelson. And a save made by Vernon. Good coverage by the Red Wings defense. And so Slava Kozlov can move it back out. The Flyers picking up their game. Kozlov with a shot that went wide. Now it's Brown jamming it behind for Fedorov. Taken out by Samuelson. Brown moving with it. Bear hugged and walks to the corner by Coffey. Brown again. Tries to step in front. Hextall flipped it back down. This will be icing. Good play by Hextall. The Flyers, though, follow up the power play goal with a good shift. They're starting to grind, starting to hit a little bit. And Eric Lindros got credit for the power play goal. And the Flyers have won every single face-off we've had in this game. We knew they'd be good, but we didn't think they'd be 8-0 this early. Nicholas Lindstrom for Detroit's defense. Well, that's been their hallmark all year. One of several that they have is their dominance in face-offs, but you wouldn't think a clean sweep this far along nearly halfway through the first. No, it, it, not only do they have the size, but they also have a lot of quickness. Again, Detroit had themselves a meeting at six o'clock regarding the tendencies and what Philadelphia does so well on face-offs as a coach Scotty Bowman just doesn't want to lose the draws clean if there's a tie with the two centermen then the forwards could jump in and help out a little bit now Scotty was talking about a lot of different things with Philadelphia they're prepared for the cycle that the Flyers can throw at them and they're also prepared for the penalty kill but they're not and I don't think anybody is for the size of Leclerc and Lindros standing on top of the goal crease on the power play. They're just hard to move. Scotty is happy with the bench here. Unlike in Colorado, he didn't have to bring his own this time. The bench is legal and okay. He's got room to make his changes for his guy. Here's Heiserman bringing it out with 10-20 left in the first in the game time. Missed for McCarty, who was watched by Needham so that Hextall can play it around the glass, and it careens back out. Needham held up McCarty, knowing how good Hextall is. Detroit will try to put the puck in to Hextall's right side. Follow up, Heiserman. Heiserman cruising in. Sandstrom trying to reach it. Can't get a backhander away, and it's forced into the glass by Brindamore. Finesse loose by Joe Koser, but it's taken by Brindamore and handed back out. Some pressure by Detroit. The Flyers dump it back in. It's chopped at by Larry Murphy. And moving to it is defense partner Nicholas Lindstrom. Desjardins waiting in neutral ice, but it's knocked away from him. Joe Koser brings it in. Koser waiting, shoveling one that went wide as Draper was cruising in front of Hextall. 
Aaron Ward, the defenseman, put it behind. Draper Hunt put it out in front. Ward with a shot, and it went wide. Chipped around. Out in front, it went off of Hextall stick. Back for another drive, and that one ricocheted back down. Oh, some good pressure by Detroit. Fine forechecking by Draper, Kroser, and Maltby, but good stick work by Ron Hextall, who didn't see that jump in, Mike. He just landed beside his goal. He didn't see the puck. It was lost in the crowd, back on Podine. Angled back in, fed to the front for Lindros by Renberg. Lindros went down, he battles with Constantino. Quick shot, and stopped by Vernon from Renberg's stick. Now it's LeClaire wheeling with it, the Legion of Doom out there. Centering pass is cut off and started out by Constantino, and the Red Wings hurry to it. It is LaPointe. Flying it back in, six foot six inch defenseman Shell Samuelson put it back off, and Katisov couldn't stop it. Down to the ice, wanting to buy a penalty. Lindros, and he did. Katisov will go. First shift, Katisov and Konstantina against Lindros, and Katisov goes. Used to be Army Navy at old JFK Stadium. Now it's the Stanley Cup final. Eric Lindros gets a step off the defenseman. And actually, it's not Lindros, it's Barishnikov. <laughs> Fatisov on Barishnikov, the all-pro. And Fatisov gets caught as Lindros took the dive. <laughs> Look at Slav has got the smile, but Lindros does a nice job talking the referee into making the call. So Eric sits as his team starts on the power play. On the first Philadelphia goal, it took a while to decide who would be credited with it. It is Lindros, his 12th, from Ninema and Brindamore, a power play goal. So Lindros, the goal for Philadelphia power play, shorthanded for the Red Wings. About a minute earlier, it was Malty. Philadelphia to the second power play. Howard Chuck over to Desjardins, fired it in. It's Vernon lifting it along. Sandstrom wanted to one time out, couldn't. Coffee has it, moves behind. Paul Coffey a backhand, knocked down by the defense. Centered out in front, and it escaped to the boards. Desjardins just waiting. Now across to Coffey. Traffic starts to form. Desjardins again, wrists one, and it's blocked away by the knee of Lidstrom, taken by Sandstrom, and he's able to send it back down on Hextall. 45 gone on the penalty kill for Detroit. And now it almost seems like the real power play is going to start. Here comes the big boy, centered by Eric Lindros. Rouse and Murphy put together, and they'll have the job of trying to move LeClaire Lindros in front. They're giving up about 20 pounds and about two inches, an offside call. Uh, 20 the, pounds and two and, inches a man. And that's why Detroit knows when they kill penalties in front of their own goal, they're going to have to move sticks out. Not so much the body, play the stick a lot. You know, Dougie Brown plays a lot on the line with Sergei Fedorov. They're on together here now to kill a penalty. Doug Brown, one of his children, son Patrick, the godfather of that child, is Slava Fatisov. They were teammates years ago in New Jersey. Doug Brown knows the Russian culture very well. And that's one reason why Doug Brown has gotten along with Fedorov so well. And I think because of that, Fedorov has played his best hockey right now of the playoffs. He and Brown are close. They know each other well. And they blend together on the ice real well. First one to this one is Doug Brown. Brown had it knocked away. Final up comes from Sergei Fedorov, and he rattles it back in. There's some crazy bounces off the glass here, John. Brand new facility, too. And the Detroit Red Wings have practiced this morning. Checked out the glass. The partitions here stick out. And the goaltenders have to be very, very aware of it. It cost the Flyers a goal against in the Rangers series. The pucks bounce very strange. Lindros pulled his way out and wedged it in for LeClaire. LeClaire sidestepped the check, still battling the wall with Rouse. Fanning on it, Murphy, second effort, got it as far as the point. Svoboda, half boards for Lindros. Back for Peter Svoboda, across to Desjardins. Desjardins trying to twist away from Brown. Pass is blocked aside by Murphy, still they battle. Coming in is LeClaire. Jammed it along, and the Red Wings clear. And out of the box is Batiso. Good penalty kill. Not a real good scoring chance for the Flyers. And Detroit won a lot of the board battles on the penalty kill deep in their own zone. Desjardins flopped it back, drilled hey, back hey, in hey. again. So Hextall with another handle. The shots are 6-4 to four Flyers. Podine, headman's on the big Joel Otto. Wrist shot is high on the Vernon. How about the pass by Hextall? Set up that whole rush. Set up the shot by Otto. Ronnie Hextall has been really good with his goal stick. Bodine with a heavy hit on LaPointe. And we get a stoppage of play. 
And the puck ended up in the stands, Mike, so they've just gotten themselves a new one. You know, the, the goaltenders have to read shots. It's the quickness of the release, and then it's the quickness in time of the shot getting to the net. That was Otto's shot that Vernon knocked down with his arm. That was 28 feet out where the shot was taken from, and one-third of a second it took from the shot to get there. A goaltender's read the shooter's English. His, his, he, they know when he's about to release the shot. They, they get themselves ready. Now, Vernon was well out. He knew he had a man in front of him providing a bit of a screen, so the shot should come high on the glove-hand side, and sure enough, it did. Mike made a good save. One-third of a second was the reaction time and the traveling time of the puck. Who would have the heaviest, hardest, quickest shot of any flyer? Leclerc? Well, I think, I think Lindros, when he releases it, Leclerc is good when he flies down the wing and takes a big slap shot. But I'll tell you what, when Lindros gets his quick hands and he stands upright and the power and the release of the shot, it's remarkable how quick the puck gets to the goalie but when Lindros shoots it. And I think for Detroit, I, I think Shanahan, the way he fires the puck off the pass. The point drop this one off. The teams are at full strength. Larry on offset flying by Hornick. Came back across and Ward chopped it in in an offside call. The puck must be the first thing across that last blue line as you're hoping to attack. Well, this is what we have coming up in this best of seven. Tuesday here in Philadelphia. That'll be on ESPN. Gary Thorne and Bill Clement will be bringing all of the action to you. Same Thursday in Detroit. June 7th at Detroit, and then John and I will be back here on Fox June the 10th at Detroit if necessary, June 12th, and at Philadelphia if there is a seventh game, and a lot of people forecast that. We'll have that one on Fox, too. Well, there's Terry Murray, who played for both these teams at one time. His first defense partner when he came to Philadelphia was Andre Moose Dupont, a member of those championship teams here. And he also played for the Detroit Red Wings. In a part of Detroit's history that is forgotten by a lot of people locally because they have decided to. But prior to the Illich family taking over this team in 1982, they had missed the playoffs 16 out of 18 years after winning the regular season title seven years in a row in the 50s. And what the Detroit Red Wings did was draft Steve Eiserman. And he became the beacon for their hockey club and a very proud player and now a very proud franchise. The other thing they did was make sure that they got the jump on most teams over in Europe. Neil Smith and Christopher Rockstone both belong to the Rangers now, but they were working for Detroit at the time. And they, they made some great choices. For instance, Konstantinov, late in the draft, Fedorov, fourth rounder, Koslov, a third rounder. I mean, they did a great job in getting Europeans into the NHL before most teams did. And that's really set together their franchise. The easy part was drafting them. The hard part was getting them out of the block. A lot of cloak and dagger there. Zubris jostled a bit, still badly. Dinah Zubris trying to get away from Kozlov. Kozlov out man, got it to Fatisov, then on for McCarty. Couldn't get it out. Brindamore put it in on goal. Addled away by Vernon and taken by Darren McCarty again. And he just pitched it high. Under five minutes to go first period. There's been some pretty good hitting, some time when the Flyers have dominated, some time also when Detroit has been able to get some good execution around Hextall, but not get it passed. Only shorthanded did they do that. Konstantinov rattled it, and Hextall stopped for Paul Coffey. Guy who started the year in Detroit. Hawk angled back along, and Lidstrom able to flick it further. Kept alive by Podine, but taken by Draper. Nubbed it along and back for Samuelson shot that slowed. Now Podine falls down trying to play it. Still they battle. Otto jostled off by McCarty and Draper able to play it through. Carried on by Nicholas Lindstrom. Fired one that went off Samuelson. Samuelson's pass is stolen. Around in front, Koser. He scored! Joe Koser, who is playing on a 30 and over team at Christmas. And they celebrated the Joe. Joey Koser started in the NHL in Detroit. Scotty Bowman and the coaching staff can't believe how Joey Koser, how much he knows the game. Shell Samuelson blocked the shot, got the puck, and threw it blind right here. Right through the middle. There's Joe Koser reading the play. He's got another man with him. And I think Hextall was thinking the pass from Koser across to Draper. Instead, Koser goes to the backhand and roofed it. I mean, I'm Try talking a bullseye major league play. Look at the roof job right underneath the crossbar. He used Draper a 
on the other side as a decoy. And Hextall was thinking pass. And right away, Kozer goes and scores on the giveaway from Shell Samuelson back in the lineup after next surgery. And it's 2 1 Detroit. Kozer unassisted at 15 56. Lindros across for Leclerc, left it behind. LaPointe nudged it on. Larry Anhoff hoisted it off. So now Desjardins with 3.45 to go in the first. And down for an icing. Joe Koser was playing at Christmas time on a 30 and over team that was called Joe Koser's hockey school team. That way he made the squad. Downtown Philadelphia with skyscrapers that now dwarf William Penn. It wasn't allowed until about a decade ago. Speaking of new additions, Joe Koser, third guy over, six feet, 205. They're all six feet. They're all 200 pounds at least. Joe Koser joined this team for several reasons. One, because he's a tough player. What a tremendous leader. Here's a shot in on Hextall that stopped. Another drive is blocked down by the defense and played back out again by Howard Chuck. It was a good face-off win by Larry Onoff, and Hextall had to make a save. And then Brindamore recovered to block the shot. That's what Detroit does a lot right there. Flip the puck in the air. There's no pass. Another giveaway almost as Shanahan goes offside. You know, Joe Koser had come off the bench. You're looking behind the referee, the linesman over there. Joey Koser will come off the bench. And there he comes. And nobody really picks him up or sees him. And there's the bad pass. Now look at Draper down here. Hextall thinks it's a pass. Instead, Koser fooled him and went to the backhand. Joey Koser will play six to eight minutes a game for Scotty Bowman. The coaches say they can't believe how smart he is. Never throws the puck away blind. Good offensive four checker. In other words, grinding in the other team's zone. But one rule no shifts for Joey Koser longer than 30 seconds. If he's out there longer, by the time he gets back to the bench, Chateau Bow Wow. Trouble. <laughs> and there's a guy down there holding a watch to make sure yeah. it doesn't go any more than 30. <laughs> Detroit changing their defense on the fly here, Mike. Taking Lindstrom and Murphy off to save them for Lindros. Aaron Ward with a collision. LaPointe with the puck. Here's LaPointe moving on closer. Two at the side of the net. There'll be a penalty coming up. This will be against Philadelphia. So the Flyers penalized with 2.51 to go in the first, and they're trailing in this game to Detroit, 2-1. To Flyers penalty number 20, Trent Flat, two minutes for interference. Time 17 minutes and nine seconds. Trent Flat fires to the minor. Trent Klatt will go for interference as he holds up Shanahan. Shanahan kept those legs going, 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 and Klatt, with a buck nowhere around, took Shanahan down. Mike, when the Flyers gave up the shorthanded goal, they still had a chance in the power play, came right back and scored. The fans got into it. With Detroit now taking the 2-1 lead on the Samuelson giveaway and the closer goal, the fans haven't recovered yet. And now Detroit has another chance to try and make it 3-1 with the power play, their first one of the series. Boy, half a dozen giveaways in this first period by the Flyers, and two of them resulted in the Detroit goals. Darren McCarty on one wing, Thomas Sandstrom on the other, Steve Iserman on the faceoff. In the shooting hole is Lidstrom, and backing up is Fedorov. It's sent by Lidstrom and back down. Well, this faceoff team, and we keep talking about it, but there you go. Philadelphia win the draw, pucks right out down the ice just that quick. Joel Otto killing off for the Flyers up front along with Podine and back Desjardins and Terrian. Ron Hextall scoops it close quarters to Terrian, has some trouble, but flipped it along and Fedorov will chase back and out to the neutral ice area so the Red Wings have to drop back. Turned on now for McCarty. Headed back for Fedorov, then along to Iserman. Watched by Samuelson. Steve Iserman to the back to Fedorov. Lidstrom fires, juggled by Hextall, loose puck, thrown in front and it's knocked down and held. A good point shot, good recovery by Ronnie Hextall to stop Sandstrom on the rebound. Detroit moved the puck around. There was a big shot. Hextall had a little trouble finding the rebound. Sandstrom was right there, had time for the shot, but Hextall makes the reaction save. All on the near side. Fedorov set up Iserman, who now sets up the shot from the blue line across here. Big shot. Look at Sandstrom. Flyers got moving around, moving around. Both defense were over on one side of the ice. Samuelson and Terrian were both over on the right side. They're both across on that side. Look at the open ice here. Sandstrom has time. 
waits for the puck to settle down, and by that time, he can't get it up, and Ron Hextall recovered nicely. We mentioned the faceoffs earlier at 9-0. It is now 13-5, so it's been about even since that point. Shell Samuelson sent that one around, and Lindros back down. Shell Samuelson played one game in the playoffs against the Rangers prior to this series. Coming back from neck surgery, he said he was really nervous for that one game. He doesn't look all that settled here in the first period. The Flyers' defense in general doesn't. Kozlov around behind, jostled by Svoboda. Puck bounced over for Glass, could not clear out, still the battle on. And it's nudged into a pile for a stoppage of play. Coming up on the new Dodge Intermission Report, JB and Dave will bring you the highlights and analysis of the first period. They'll also sit down with NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman to talk about the state of the game. That's all coming up during the first intermission. Well, has one of the two teams dictated play yet, or is the jury still out at this point? No, uh, I, I don't think so. It's kind of been a, a game where there's been some emotional up and downs, but Detroit, to me, seems so settled. Now, I know they gave up the power play goal, Philadelphia's got to stop turning the puck over with the unforced errors. In other words, the pass through the middle and things like that. So far, it's been a good penalty kill here with Detroit having those two chances on Hextall, the, the last one by Sandstrom. This is thrown around by Kapistoff. Chopped to the high glass. One time to Long, and Murphy tried to keep it alive. Apparently did. Terrian just angled it back out. Slava Fatisov, outmanned by Otto, tucked a pass on to Podine. Wrist shot, and it's deflected wide by Murphy. Down to the last 28 of the man advantage, to the last minute and 15 seconds in this period. Brendan Shanahan dropped it off. Kozlov tried to work it free. Brindamore put it off Shanahan. Brendan Shanahan on the Red Wings still battling to a side along the wall. Almost everybody there flipped into Shanahan, tried to nudge it further. Coming by, battling his way off. back out the teams are back at full strength Samuelson lobbed it back John Drews will be earning ice time with shifts like that an unsung hero in the previous series a good oh, setup oh, by oh, Drews oh, to Brindamore and Vernon with a good save here we have a delayed offside and the faceoff will be in the neutral zone the Red Wings wanted the puck deep in the fire zone but the linesmen say no it'll be just inside center ice John Drews with a remarkable shift here as he cuts and has three men on him, yet still finds a way to set up the trailer. Brindamore, look at him trailing in. Good quick shot. Mike Vernon made it look pretty easy, read to play nicely. Here Drews battles through the hooks of Shanahan, gets loose, keeps the puck ahead of him as much as possible, and still battles. Now here he doesn't give up on the play, keeps it alive. A little look. There's Brindamore, and there's the shot. Good effort by John Drews. In the playoffs every year, there is debate about who will be the John Bruce of this year, and it goes back to when Bruce in the 90 playoffs had 14 goals in 15 games, way beyond expectation. That was when he was a member of the Washington Capitals. It's back to Coffee for a shot that is held by Vernon. We're going to get a penalty. Yeah, it was 17.3 seconds to go, Mike. LeClaire was held along the boards. Joey Koser was with him. Koser, I think, will get an interference call. His, his shoulder pads, you can see, are all over the place. He's got no helmet, but he lost the battle with the referee, and Koser will go to the penalty box. He wanted to keep LeClaire along the boards. Now, Leclerc, you can see there, has already hit his man, Konstantinov. Look, Koser, stay with him. Leclerc's using his butt to push away at Koser. And Koser, these are two very strong individuals. Koser's huge and strong. His sweater over his <laughs> Oh, my, what a battle. Leclerc wins it. Koser gets two minutes and a chance to repair his equipment. I didn't realize how strong John Leclerc was, but his upper body and chest is thick. I mean, thick through the chest, right through his back, and big shoulders, and he almost impossible to move him along the boards or in front of the goal. Look now, like, I'm sorry, Mike. Go right ahead. Only 17.3 to go here. Lindros with his ability to win draws. But the Flyers have to drop back to the last 10 of the period. Vernon drilled back off. LeClaire stopped it down to the last four. Still the battle on. Red Wings able to kick it to the boards. Eiserman muscled it along, and that took care of the period. So 1.43 of power play time for Philadelphia at the outset of the second. End of the first. It's the Red Wings 2 and the Flyers 1. 
James Brown, Dave Maloney, will be along with the new Dodge Intermission Report, the Commissioner, after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Even though the Wings came out of the West as only the third seed in that conference, they were wearing all the weight of the expectations that spring. You got goals from Grindliners, Maltby, and Coaster in the first 20 minutes, and maybe that was a sign from the heavens. Detroit up a goal after the first period, and all of hockey town was on edge. So the second period about to start. Philadelphia will have the power play trailing 2-1. to one. The stats brought to you by Bud Ice. The shot's 10-8. Philadelphia scoring chances slim in number, but 5-4 Detroit. Faceoffs won, 16-6. Outstanding time to Koser, a minute 43 at the beginning of the period. The Detroit coaching staff happy with the way they've been able to contain Detroit in front of their own goal to this point. Scotty Bowman's club, though, now shorthanded for the third time. The Flyers never got much going at even strength. So they look like they may have to rely on their power play in this game. Detroit coaches told us that bad decisions in the neutral zone hurt their club and stopped them from getting the puck deep. Therefore, no sustained forecheck, something that the Flyers are famous for. But they are one for two on the power play and now continue on their third. Rod Brindamore to take the opening face off. That's won by Steve Eiserman, the captain of Detroit, and spun back down by Constantino. Konstantinov and Lidstrom, the defense. We mentioned Iserman. The other forward up front is Sandstrom. John LeClaire angled it in. The read and the clear by Vernon. Ninema and Coffey, the point men, the defensemen, back on the power play. Mike Vernon will not wander and handle the puck unless he's absolutely sure he has time to do it. This time he's got time. Flings it off the glass. It bounces down for Lindros. Tried to get it in front. Still trying. Lindros around behind, but he lost it. Konstantinov could not get it out. All coffee. Keeps it on. Need him on drive. Deflected and it went just wide. Brindamore allows it to go to Leclerc. Misplay, though. Konstantinov trickled one. Iserman able to send it further. Thomas Sandstrom up with it. 90-footer was unable to go more than about five inches. Now it's wedged ahead for Howard Chapel. A three on one. Sandstrom's got to just dump the puck in. He took a big shot. It was blocked. Needham has set up the three on one. And Philadelphia never got the shot, but what a chance it was. Murphy jostles with Renberg. Puck flip back along. Knocked down by Shanahan and forced to neutralize. 20 left on the power play of the Flyers. Larry Murphy turns. Vernon there flung it away from him. Came over for Shanahan. Leaping grab and a good keep by Desjardins. Shanahan got help from Murphy to clear it back down. In two seconds, in one. And Koser is out. And takes the pass, but was quickly run off by Klatt. Del Samuelson back to Klatt, angled on a cross for Peter Svoboda. That chipped away to Koser again. Joe Koser, backhander, fought off by the waffle board of Hextall. Konstantinov playing in deep. Samuelson tipped it along for Podine. Sean Podine just lobbed it back out. Petisov to take it on defense. Coffee fresh from the bench has it. Lays it on a cross for Podine. Podine run off by Petisov. Cut back to the point. Samuelson hurried a shot. Deflected high. Six Red Wings right there, including Mike Vernon. Coffey did a nice job by not creating the offside. He put a lateral pass along the blue line, which kept the Flyers onside, then moved into the zone. Here's the shot. Look at all the Flyers go to the net, and all the Red Wings come right back and collapse. They respect the size of the Flyers. Six Red Wings are right in front, six of them. Shot was deflected up high. Vernon doesn't see it. It drops down, he does not panic, but he catches it with a glove. And the Detroit Red Wings come right back in deep and help out Mike Vernon. They collapse real deep. The puck there never hit the stick of Lacroix. It hit his arm. Now look at Vernon not flail. The puck actually crawled down his arm. There it finds the glove and he hangs on. 
Mike Vernon spread out across the goal line and did not panic and ended up making a save without even looking at or without even seeing the puck. Well, as you watch that replay, you marvel at how he did not panic. How could he not? He had no idea where it Experience. was. Experience. Young goaltenders would be flailing around and the arms would be going and perhaps knock it into the net. Vernon just calmly waited near the goal line and the puck found him. Aaron Warren. bringing it back. Kurt Maltby with a 90-footer. Hextall tapped it aside. Peter Svoboda chased off and walled by Maltby. Good hit put on Niedema. That came from McCarty. Meanwhile, back up ice with it is John Bruce. Red Wings with three men back. Vernon flung it off the glass. Red Wings shift from defense to offense. Angled back ahead from McCarty. Trouble on the read and then spun it off the stick of Hextall. Flyers have too many men on the ice. Vernon with a good pass up ice. Boy, some heavy hitting by both teams. Back to Ward. Shoots one that ricocheted off Niedema. Big Dan Hornick with it. And then he's rammed by McCarty. And this kid Niedema, the youngster on the blue line, has blocked a lot of shots here for the Flyers. Well, we mentioned the heavy hitting, some severe crunching into new boards and glass that don't give much. It's been good hitting where you're not seeing too many reaction plays by the players. Draper there after Maltby had thrown a hit. Here you see McCarty moving in hard on the big guy. Cordix. McCarty played a lot against LeClaire in the first period, Mike. And uh, we saw that the Flyers did not have a lot of what they call sustained offense in the first period, what they're famous for, the four check and the, and the battle down deep. Eric Lindros played six minutes and 36 seconds in the first 20 minute period. Averaged about 40 seconds a shift, which is good. The playoffs are just starting in the finals here, and it could be a long series, so you try to play it smart regarding the length of your shifts. Fedorov only played four minutes and two seconds in the first period. That's somewhat interesting. Not very much ice time for him. Barry Murray was saying that Eric Lindros has about three minutes a game less this year than he did last year. Here's Iserman twirling with it. And he attributed that to the depth of his team. Eric doesn't have to play as much. Now Lindstrom. Angled it ahead. Bet ahead by Sandstrom, but taken by Rod Brindamore, who played eight and a half minutes in the first. More than anyone. Power Chuck. The hard around. That's a good play by Howard Chuck. Didn't mess with the puck in the neutral zone. Put the puck in away from Vernon. Only the Flyers couldn't recover the thing. And now there's an icing. At least it forced the faceoff deep in the Detroit zone. I would think the Lindros line or the auto line would be next up. And that means that the Flyers would have a good chance of winning the draw. So, you know, Detroit is the visitor. They've got to put their players on the ice first. The referee now has put his arm up to stop Detroit with any more line changes. Now the Flyers can match. Now, Scotty Bowman there was just talking to Barry Smith. See that? Scotty talked to Barry. Barry then tells the players. Scotty doesn't too often tell the players direct. He tells Barry. Barry tells the players, and that's the system they use. The referee now has made sure that both teams have made their changes, and it's Lindros against Fedorov, and Lindros wins the draw. Rolled around and taken by Fatisov. Lindros waiting for it, jammed away by Fedorov and started back out again. Shanahan wins one that's taken by LeClaire. Myers defense play. 11 shots apiece in the game. Two to one Detroit ahead. The goal of margin right now, a breakaway, unassisted goal by Joe Koser. This big line not able to skate so far for the Flyers. Detroit said they're going to try and take away the defense. If you take away the defense, maybe Eric and John LeClaire and Renberg can't get that speed going that they need. Let's check in downstairs with Joe Micheletti and a Hall of Famer. Bobby Orr. Bobby, you were playing here back in 1974 in the finals. Uh, what goes through your mind when you watch this game? Uh, tough game, just like I'm watching tonight, Joe. It's a very physical game, and they're like the old Flyers. They're, they, they take the body, and uh, it's a very good hockey game out there, and it's going to be a heck of a series. Do you have a uh, pick for the finals? Uh, I have got to give the edge to, to the Flyers uh, with Eric. Uh, but, uh, you know, Eric's got to play the top of his game, and, of course, he's got to be supporting cast, and uh, uh, I think uh, I've got to give a little, a little edge to the Flyers. Thanks for the time, Bobby. Good to see you. Thanks. Beckham. Those two gentlemen will accompany Laura Wall of Anaheim, California to center ice at the end of this period, and the million-dollar shot will take place, and here is a backhander that's held by Hextall, and it came from Slava Fatisov. Bobby Orr's team was beaten 1-0.
by Bernie Perrant and the Flyers right here in this building. Jojo Berry, not in this building, next door at the Spectrum. Jojo Bear was the goaltender for Boston. This time it's Ronnie Hextall hanging on as Larry Onoff sees some ice against Eric Lindros. Interesting here too, Mike. The Lindros line stays out. However, Renberg goes off and Brindamore comes on for the draw. May 19th of 74, the day that game took place. Bobby Orr himself provided a signature goal in 1970 of a sweep of St. Louis that became the, the badge of a championship for him and the official ushering in of an era in which defensemen no longer stayed at home all the time. Some guys had tremendous skills to move up ice. Paul Coffey is an example of that, but Bobby Orr is a standard bearer. Here comes Igor Larionov giving over to Kozlov. Kozlov worked over and smacked to the boards by Terry. And meanwhile, the puck comes to Lidstrom, winds up and shoots one, and that ricochet back down. Hustling for it is Larry Murphy. Getting there first was LeClaire, and he tripled one that is covered by Vernon, and play is stopped. Flyer is trying to force something, make it happen. A good block by Lindros. But Detroit recovered, very schooled defensively, and never gave up the shot. You'll see the puck get back to the defenseman, Lindstrom right here, he tries to get a better angle. Look at the block by Lindros. Flyers is three on two here. Renberg will hold up Murphy right there, holds him right up, but nothing developed. LeClaire was not able to hit Lindros. Vernon easily made the play, and nothing happened. John, in your playing uh, time, did you ever have a contract that kicked in if you won three games in the Stanley Cup Finals to an automatic one-year extension? That's what yeah. Mike Vernon has. It's only 2.3 million if yeah, he wins something. three games yeah. in the finals. And the thing is that he fully expects that if he does get that contract and the Detroit Red Wings win, he won't be a Red Wing next year. Osgood, the backup, his salary goes from 750 grand to 1.6. And there's a third goaltender by the name of Hodgson. It's very good. They're trying to pass it on to the younger guy. Here is Heron Ward laying it back in. Poster around behind, checked off by Coffey. Lacroix tries to get to it. Poster still able to keep control along the boards. Chris Draper trying to help him, but it's Poster taken to the corner, worked over a bit by Coffey, had his jersey pulled. Poster still. And only two Red Wings deep. Third man was high. Ward shot went wide. There'll be a penalty coming up. How about that? Draper and Koser battled, battled, battled. And finally, Detroit finds themselves on the power play. The muckers and the grinders got it done. Joey Koser wants the puck deep, and then he wants to battle for the puck with whoever's there. Here's the two-on-two. -two. You just see two players for each team there. Maltby stays high, but Lacroix will take the penalty, and Joe Koser did all the work. Lacroix will end up grabbing a hold of his man, throwing him down to the ice. And that was Draper, and now Detroit gets to go on the power play with a 2-1 lead. 0 for 1 with two shots on their earlier power play. Steve Iserman has it. Iserman onto the back. Lindstrom gives it back over to Iserman again. Iserman sent one in front, trying to connect on a pass, but it went off a flyer to Benzman skate. Still the Red Wings keep it. LaPointe rolls it on the backhand. Sandstrom trying to twist with it. Worked over pretty well by Terrian, so it's Iserman again. It gives to the back. Lidstrom a shot. Back down in front by an defenseman. The point again. Back to Lidstrom once more. They play some catch. A couple of Red Wings move in deep. Lidstrom wants to pass the puck across, but Otto won't let him. Here goes Fedorov in. Iserman to Fedorov, and the shot got the glass. It's a set play. It's called a down low play by Detroit. It's their set play for this series. They want the, the plays down low across the top of the goal tree. They tried it twice with I, with uh, Fedorov, and it hasn't worked. Brindamore drills it back down on Vernon. Halfway through the power play. Fedorov could not get by Brindamore. They rang it and neutralized with a pass back to Lindstrom. They're set for the hard around blast, but Hextall right there to spike it loose. Hextall along, but it went through Brindamore. Punched ahead further. Moving on is Svoboda. Down to the ice he goes, and a penalty coming up. A good forcing there. Svoboda, the defenseman. And the rest of the Flyers up front. You know, Detroit tried to set play on the faceoff in winning the draw. And then Fedorov sneaking down. Fedorov playing the point on the power play. He's played a lot of defense during the regular season. Here's a look at the penalty. Fedorov moved in, but Svoboda, the defenseman, kept the play alive. And there you can see Fedorov tripping him up. 
at the end of the shift. Svoboda down, Fedorov in the box. Earlier, Detroit tried to play twice. Fedorov was set up beautifully to miss the net moving into the blue line. And Detroit knew going into this series, that was the play they were going to try and make work. They almost did. You saw Lacroix and Fedorov. The two teams will be a man short for 40 seconds. After 40 seconds, barring further penalties, it will be a Philadelphia power play. In four on four time, Detroit has scored two goals and allowed one. The Flyers have scored three goals and allowed none. That's when play is four on four. And that's what we have when play resumes. And for Detroit, they've got four Russians on the ice. Konstantinov, Fatisov, the D, and up front, Larionov and Kozlov. Now for the Flyers, they have to discuss this and know that this is a group that will try to recover and regroup and then hit the long pass. Larionov wins to Fatisov. Konstantinov and Kozlov are out, four Russians. They'd love to have five, but they're short. Larionov bringing it off. Drops to Konstantinov, then over to Kozlov. Drills one that ricocheted off a skate. Dinah Subras peels off and hands to Svoboda. And Svoboda just curls back. In 14 seconds, Svoboda's team will get a man back in a power play. Desjardins on, and it's angled in by Zubris. In four seconds, the man advantage begins for Philadelphia. Detroit with puck possession. It's across to Fatisov, out of the box, run off by Lacroix. But the Red Wings golf it back in. Now Lacroix goes out, which will set up the power play. Lindros is up at the Detroit blue line. 106 to go for the power play for Philadelphia. Draper and Malti up front on the penalty kill. Laid back down by Lindstrom. Tenacious back check by Maltby. First attack stopped at the Detroit blue line. Let's see what happens now on the second attack by the Flyers. Nina hands over to Paul Coffey. His pass went off Brindamore, jammed along by Lindstrom. Angle across by Nina. It's the third attack, no good. Here's the fourth, no good. 35 seconds to go. Murphy with a pass that's cut by Lindros. Shooting! with the shot. On to the back, Nienema. Quickly back over to Paul Coffey. Coffey to Nienema. Drive! Save To the boards, Lindros. Took a chop from Murphy, and he came up with a puck and cleared it back out. The Coffey is setting up Nienema with the one-time pass for the one-time shot. Nienema faces Coffey, and since he's a left-hand shot, he can shoot the puck off the pass. Zubras rolled it behind. Two seconds and one. Better off is out. Up with it, Shanahan. The pass across is blocked down by Brown and given to Federoff. Federoff with a shot. That one blocked. Federoff again. It's in on Hextall. Kicked off his pad and lifted back along, but not out. Rouse keeps the pressure on Constantino. It hits the pipe. Turnaround shot, and Hextall got a piece of that. Still they battle. It is Rouse to the slot with a shot that's tipped to the seats. Two one Detroit. Look at the Flyers all running around to one side as Detroit puts the pressure on. And listen to what happens. There was a goal post on the deflection by Shanahan as Detroit puts the pressure on in the second period. As Detroit has eight of the eleven shots. There's another look at the deflection by Shanahan. Got in behind Ronnie Hextall and was almost 3-1. Eiserman on the faceoff with Otto. Squibs to Hextall for the set to Shell Samuelson. There's that perfect left wing lock again. Good. By Detroit. Ronnie Hextall smart here. Cover it up, start over again. You know, the Flyers won the draw. They won the draw, but on their breakout, Detroit played the left wing lock, and there was no completion of a pass, and the Flyers couldn't get out of the zone. So Terry Murray, he looks a little concerned. He, he's not getting the flow through the neutral zone that his team is noted for. 
You know, the, the main thing that Joel Otto and his teammates wanted was to establish the four check, and it's halfway through regulation time almost now, and it still yeah. hasn't happened. Well, you've got to get through the neutral zone to get the puck deep. Then you can establish the four check and punish Detroit's defensemen, but so far the Flyers can't do that. It's a whole new system they're seeing here. Even though they're controlling and winning a lot of the draws, they're not getting through with speed. And if you have speed through the neutral zone, then you can bang and crash. Go! Yeah, here they win the draw again. Now there's a set breakout. What happens? Swatted back by Thomas Sandstrom. Power Chuck turns with it. He's checked but got it along for Desjardins. Zubris tries to foist it out, and the Red Wings get it. Pass from McCarty was blocked in by Howard Chuck in an offside. Next week on the Fox Saturday Baseball Game of the Week, the new look Mets head to Cincinnati to take on Barry Larkin and the Reds. Plus other regional action coverage begins at 12.30 Eastern, 11.30 Central with In the Zone, followed by all the action. Check local listings for the game and time in your area on Fox. Jim Turk Evers, native of South Philadelphia, a part of the Flyers organization for now a decade and a half. Began as a stick boy in Maine after he worked with the old Philadelphia Firebirds of the North American League, but entered the Flyers organization with the Maine Mariners of the American League and then wound up coming down here, and he's back home to stay. Chipped along by Sandstrom, kept by Petiso. Desjardins then on to Clatt. Knocked down by the high stick of Otto, and for that reason, play a stop. Joel Otto, a native of Elk River, Minnesota. And if you just think back, as the Otto family probably does at this time of year, a lot of old memories come rushing back. Three decades ago in Elk River, Kelly and Bob Otto, like so many parents, provided travel and encouragement. But watch Big Joel. We have some rare film footage of him in one of his games going through everyone. He's a head taller than everybody else on the ice. What a play. What a play. Two of his three brothers, Kirk and Craig, still live back in Minnesota. The other brother, Eric, is in Corning, New York. How proud they must be of this guy. He's won a championship with Calgary in 89. And now hoping for one with Philadelphia. He's wearing a visor because of a badly fractured nose that he received a couple of series ago. However, the nose is pretty good. Next okay to be a consideration. You need so much oxygen to go back and forth, especially in the humidity that we've had in Philadelphia just today. Konstantinov turned that one back up the boards, and it's off the stick of Patiso. Pitch fork back along. Konstantinov gloved it back. Flyer fans here now trying to get their team going with some chanting. And Detroit is not allowed much here in the second. Only three shots by the Flyers. That one deflected wide by Murphy. Larry Murphy down to the ice. He goes. Meanwhile, they scrap for it. Larry on up trying to stalemate Leclerc. It's off the back of the goal. Losing sight of it is Bill McCreary, the referee. And so play stopped. We'll be back. Joey Koser walking near the Detroit bench. He was yanked down near Ron Hextall on his last shift and twisted his knee a little bit. And sometimes you can just walk it off. He's returned to the bench now. And we'll see if he's able to make his next shift. He has the goal of margin on the breakaway. Needham on a shot, save! Covering his Vernon. And the puck wound up going over. Looked like the Flyers were really upset, but it occurred after the whistle. Mike, the best offense that Lindros' line's getting is from face-offs. He wins them clean. Watch this on the backhand side. Back to the point. Now watch him drive to the net. Eiserman's with him, but Lindros plows away, almost a deflection, finds a rebound, and then he's thrown down to the ice surface by Steve Eiserman. This was Koser's last shift. There, a stick through the legs by Terry and twisted down, and that twisted the knee a little bit of Joe Koser, who struggled to get back to the bench. But again, Lindros loves to pull the puck back to Niedema on his backhand, and if he does, he drives to the net. Oh, that time he tricked everybody, including me, and went forward. I do apologize. That one did not go over, but it looked for a moment like it had. Here's Federoff cruising in, shooting. I think that one was in and popped back out quickly, just under the crossbar. And it does. It is a goal, and it is 3-1. to one. 
They just restrung these nets today, so there's a lot of pop to them. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe Lewis is celebrating, and so they should. What a shot by Sergei Fedorov. Lindros fooled me. He went forward with the puck on Fedorov. Vernon plays it, moves it. Now watch the Flyers here pinching, pinching, pinching. Here goes Fedorov with a two-on-one, and folks, watch this wrist shot. Snap, top corner, over the shoulder of Ronnie Hextall. There's the shot, a big-time Major League shot again as Hextall's beaten up high for the third time by Detroit, and Detroit has the 3-1 lead. They took care of defense, generated offense, and are starting to control this game. Sixth in the playoffs for Fedorov, who in the first four games of the playoffs had no points at all. But then picked up 14 in the next 12 and has gotten a big one here. Game six against Colorado, Aaron Miller briefed him. And he couldn't even talk for about five minutes. But he returned and got one of the key goals in the clincher. Deflected along, Petisov has it knocked away from him and another offside call stopping the clock. Now, Peter Svoboda has been in the Flyer locker room. He just now is returning to the bench for the Flyers. With what happens is with Ron Hextall to the right side of the Flyers bench to our left as we look, he's got to make his way all the way down to the defensive end of the bench. All six defensemen sit down there. The sixth defense sit at the end where their goaltender is. The forwards sit at the other end. They also be all forwards. Those are all defensemen. And the attack side is there so the forwards can change quickly and get in on the attack. The defense can change quickly to defend. Federoff's goal comes from Larry Murphy at 11.41. This might be icing. It is. And it'll come back near Mike Vernon. So watching, I'm sorry, Mike, just in watching this series to this point, time and space for the Flyers, they just don't have a lot of it. There's one of the fine, fine young players, Chris Terrian, leads all players with plus minus in the NHL throughout the playoffs, a plus 16. Here's a, another look at Svoboda, he can't go. He's gone back, so the Flyers are down. A defenseman to five, as Svoboda, you can see, was limping on that play. Joe Micheletti's got some info. Yeah, Peter Swoboda was hitting the right foot with the puck, J.D., and having a difficult time. He went to the Flyers' locker room once, returned. They're afraid to take the skate off because they're afraid of the possible swelling. He came back to the bench, found out he couldn't go, and now is back in the Flyer locker room again. Okay, Joe, thank you very much. Renberg on the wing with Rod Brindamore. Face off controlled by the Red Wings. They get it to neutralize. Larianov couldn't stop it, though. Once again, Lindstrom and, Larry and uh, Murphy, the two defensemen, they've been out there all game long, or most of it, against Eric Lindros. And right now, Brindamore's on the line with Lindros in place of Leclerc. Shanahan fed it by Larry Anon. Renberg with trouble. Coffey kicks it to him, got it up the wall for Brindamore to start out with it. 7-13 left in the second, 3-1 in favor of Detroit. Lindros wedged off behind by LaPointe. Brindamore there tried to play it through, could not. And it skipped back up for Brendan Shanahan to bring ahead. Shanahan cruising in and Platt fed it away. The Red Wings are caught in the midst of a change two on one. Otto moving in, could not get it to Brindamore as it was blocked off by Bob Rouse. Platt's pass is taken by Maltby. Boy, what a play made back there by Rouse. Joe Koser back on, didn't miss a shift with a knee. John LeClaire was not on the wing with Eric Lindros. Brindamore replaced him. It makes you wonder about LeClaire. Maybe an injury problem. Good point. Here's Draper. Taken out by Desjardins and Platt steps ahead. Codine put it back in. Well, with the hitting we've seen in the first period and a half, wouldn't be surprising that there's some guys that can't continue right now. And John LeClaire was hit a lot in the Rangers series, as well as he played, but he did get hit a lot. And you'll wonder, is there a problem? Offside again. Clock stopped once more. And the Flyers had themselves a two-on-one. Always with the Flyers a two-on-one play, they love to pass the puck. Great play at the blue line as the Flyers stood up and clad on the back check, creates the turnover. Two-on-one. There comes Rouse off the bench. He's back there, and he played the pass beautifully, not completed. 
Now the Flyers, Trent Klatt does the great job on the back check on Shanahan. Watch him out of nowhere. There he is. A backhand pass. Rouse now has just come off the bench for Detroit, and he hustled back into position, or it would have been a two-man breakaway. There's a look at John LeClaire. Yeah, interesting. He's been with Howard Chuck and Zubras, not with Aaron Lindros. So Terry Murray juggling things up here for the Flyers as they try to generate some offense. This is Iserman bringing it ahead. Iserman could not get by Shell Samuelson. Nina able to take it away. Nina with a little toss ahead now to Lacroix. Lacroix up the wing and Drews is in. Drews with a shot to save by Vernon and he covers. And the biggest save of the game for Vernon. The left wing lock here was broken by the Flyers. Flat out broken. And a great pass to John Drews, who was almost tackled by Fatisov, but Vernon made the save. Why, well, Drew seems to do something almost every shift he gets for the Flyers. He stayed wide. Look at the, the, the red jerseys, the Red Wings, Sandstrom head across. Here is Drew staying wide. Let's look at him stay wide. What a pass. Bullseye, he's in. Now right here, Fatisov does everything but tackle Drew, and he couldn't, and Vernon the save. Maybe Fatisov harassed Drew enough. Now watch Drew's cut to his right. Get to the right, get open. There he goes to his right, got open. He moves in, Fatisov knocked him a little bit off balance and Vernon made the save. Oh, that's some play, some play. As the left wing lock was broken, Vernon stayed up, moved across, no hole through the legs, and Drews was stopped. Fourth line for the Flyers get the good scoring chance. Gonna see some more time as things move on too. You know, if John LeClaire is not hurt and has just been moved around to another line, does this represent the first significant blink in the series? Detroit changed their formation and lines going into this game. The Flyers did not. However, Detroit has forced the Flyers to adjust things, to try and find a way to make it happen. And on the last play, I'll tell you what, McQuall, a great flat pass to John Drews, and he moved in on the break. And Vernon made the big save. Now Lindros is out, Mike. He's on the right side with the quad. And Drews is over on the left side. So the Flyers are really juggling things up. Are they ever? Samuelson back on defense, working with Tom Coffey. Samuelson tried to chip it through Sandstrom. That didn't work. And it stalemated at the line. This telecast presented by authority of the National Hockey League and intended for the private use of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, or the use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this telecast, including the imposition of a charge for viewing it, without the express written consent of the National Hockey League, is prohibited. You saw that shots on goal panel. I think the significant thing, too, to Detroit's progress has been that they have not been outshot in any of their Stanley Cup playoff games and only equaled once by Colorado. And what I find interesting here is the defense for Detroit, they're not manhandling Lindros. It's Murphy and Lindstrom. They're not known as guys that go out and knock people silly. It's just play the body a little bit, play the stick, and play the puck. And you see Lindros with 18 shifts. He's gotten two shots. He threw one here in the second period and went high and wide. There was a rocket. But no sustained offense, and his line has been broken up. Either that, or you can think about Lindros getting a lot more ice time as the game moves along and his team down 3-1. Murphy and Lindstrom have been on for eight of the 15 first shifts that Lindros has had, including four of the first six here in the second period. But half were a little better. Yeah, but most of those had even strengthened. Exactly. You know, Mike, I mean, you, you take the power play ones out of there, and these two guys are on there almost every single time at even strength. And it's not brawn. It's more brains trying to beat them as opposed to muscle and Konstantinov in the face. And maybe I, I, Konstantinov sometimes can wake people up. You know what I mean? To get a man. Shot that ricocheted wide. Desjardins moves in, but it's swept from him by Thomas Sandstrom. Off of Desjardins. On to Brindamore. And right back in, and Vernon stops it behind. The player on the ice with Brindamore. A real change here for the Flyers. I didn't see this line combination once in the Rangers series with Zubris, Leclerc, and Brindamore. A real juggling act here for the Flyers to jumpstart their offense. And Leclerc looks fine. Yeah, he does. That is a good sign. For the Flyers, you're always concerned about their best, any team's best players becoming injured in a series. And both of these teams are, are real 
uh, relatively healthy going into this series. Rod Brindamore has been the horse of the night. He's played almost half of the time in the first period, about half the second. Now you go all the way out to Vancouver, a little south of there is a beautiful island called Vancouver Island. And the salmon capital, I think, of the world, Campbell River, that's where Rod Brindamore's from, and he doesn't fish. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Mom's on the school board, his dad's a pipe fitter, they're here watching. A good guy. It's nice to see him do well. We have a penalty. Another interference call, the fifth of the night. Three one Detroit Detroit uses the left wing lock. Here's the left arm headlock <laughs> by Fatisov on the youngest player in the playoffs is Zubris. Look at this one. There's the arm right around the throat. And the good play by Zubris to work to draw the power play. And the Flyers need a power play. Their fans know it. They're standing and cheering right now. Lindros, Brindamore, and Leclerc up front. Puck back to Ninema, then to Brindamore again. For Ninema, hurries one in front, and it ricocheted off a skate. It's played by Larionov back into the glove of Coffee. The Flyers want the puck in front of the net because Leclerc and Lindros are there. And with their size and a loose puck, they usually get to it. Coffee's pass came right across for the clear back as far as center ice by Lindstrom. Under four and a half to play in the second. It was 1-1 midway in the first. Joe Koser scored on a breakaway 2-1, and Fedorov rifled one top shelf midway in the second to make it 3-1 Detroit. The earlier goal scorers, Maltby for Detroit, and Rod Brindamore, that was changed from Lindros. Brindamore for Philadelphia. Lindros is out there as it's lofted in by Ninema. Off the stick of Mike Vernon. Dumped along the wall, but it took a Detroit bounce over for Draper. Second effort, he got it back to neutralize. Niedema has done a nice job knocking pucks down, blocking shots, but he now needs a change, so the big unit can't get it going here, and they now go off the ice with under a minute to go for the Flyers. Lindros off the ice. Oh, Coffey ahead to Desjardins. Desjardins can't get it through Rouse. And Murphy. Play. Right into the bench of the Flyers. Well, when you consider Larry Murphy and the rags to riches story being with Toronto and looking like he was going to have no sniff of the playoffs, and now he's competing for the Stanley Cup. He's won it twice with Pittsburgh, and the breakup that he made of that two on one earlier in this period is going to look pretty big if Detroit goes on to win this. Murphy came over from Toronto. Detroit picked up a salary for the rest of this season. Next season, if Murphy stays with Detroit, Toronto will pick up $800,000 of his salary while he plays for Detroit. Not bad. No, not bad. So now with the stoppage and the change, Lindros now has gone to the bench, off the bench, changing sticks here to buy time to get him a rest. He didn't have much of a break. And how about this, Mike? He's back on the point for the power play. On the point. We haven't seen that very often either. Very interesting. Murphy just slashed it back down the ice. Half a minute to go on the Philadelphia power play. Terry Murray's trying everything. I mean, he is trying everything to get offense here. Desjardins angled it for Drews. Gloved out of play by Rouse, who wanted to keep it in play but could not. So 17 seconds still to go. Garth Snow, the backup goaltender started these playoffs because of a difficult final week for Ron Hextall in a couple of games against the Rangers and one against New Jersey. Then he had to be relieved. And it was Hextall, the elder, who came in. These guys are an awful lot alike. I think the one thing Snow reacted adamantly about the poll, well, maybe that's overstating a little bit. He was not happy with it, and that's how Ron Hextall would have acted 10 years ago. Yeah, exactly. So there's a difference in age, even though their styles, I think, are similar. Their size is similar. Well, they have a good relationship, Hextall and Snow, as does Mike Vernon, along with Chris Osgood, the older goaltender, fatherly figure, doing a great job helping the younger goaltender learn the trade. Better off just missed for Doug Brown. Brown now for Lindros. Two seconds left on the penalty, and Batisov is out. Is on. Comes Red. That's 
first pass is beautiful. Here's a three on two, and right through the legs goes the shot. Now the neutral zone pass was beautiful. This sets up the three on two. Bad angle shot. Vernon was out so far that he tried to recover. He couldn't get closed up. Fredberg skating beautifully. Puts the puck wide, and there's Leclerc, and through the legs. Now Vernon is out so far. One step, two steps, and can't close the legs. John Leclerc gets Philadelphia back into the game after their power play did not work. Leclerc's eight from Renberg and Lindros. A legion of doom goal. Gotten Philadelphia back in this. It's not often we say this, but I think you can credit the crowd for getting Philadelphia back into this too because they were sagging, they were having to make changes. During a stoppage, the crowd picked them up. And Ron Hextall set up the play that the Legion took care of. Heavy hit by Clack. Puck loose in front. Two flyers go down and a penalty coming up. And Joel Otto maybe hurt a little bit on the play as he was submarined by Clack, his own teammate. You know, I wonder if Clack's going to get the penalty here. I don't know. It could be charging on Clack. Look at Clack move in. Does he leave his feet? Yeah. He left his feet enough and hit so high that he's been given a penalty for charging. So 2.15 to go in the second, and Detroit will get a power play. There's Klatt, elbows right into the face of Fetisov, and then Klatt went in front of the net, and submarine Joel Otto, who ended up getting banged up on the play. Detroit's power play. Eight penalties called by Bill McCreary tonight. Five for interference, a trip, a high stick, and a charge. Just like these teams had meetings to prepare for this final series, the men in stripes did too. Well, Trent Klatt did some great hitting on behalf of the Flyers in the previous series and actually all the way through the playoffs. But here, he left his feet a little bit and he put his arms right into the face of Fetisov, so he's been given the penalty. And at the point in time when the Flyers started to get it going here, they were back in it, starting to really get the emotion going. Now, this to me is a huge, huge power play penalty kill with a 3-2 Red Wing lead late in the second. Hodeen will be out with Joel Otto. Though shaken up, he remains on the penalty kill. It'll be Terrian working in back for Philadelphia with Desjardins. The Red Wings bring it ahead with Larry Arnold. Then Kozlov. Shanahan is the other forward. Terrian bashed it from him, and Otto deflected it back down. Now watch for Detroit on the power play. If they set up, they're better off to sneak in from the blue line. Kozlov with a shot that's turned away by Hextall and forced wide by Desjardins. Falling down, Lariano got it to Shanahan to the back now to Lindstrom. Hands it across. Big drive by Federal. And it went off the pad of Hextall. 76 mile an hour shot. Codine trying to work it in. Ron Brindamore short-handedly up with it for the Flyers and tucks it deeper. One twenty-five left in the period, a minute ten to go on the power play. Sergei Fedorov hands it to Kozlov, and Kozlov knuck one to Iserman. Iserman swirling with it, trying to avoid the checking. It's swung by Drews, but right to Litz. Chopped back down by Nino. Nino is everywhere. The Flyers down to five defensemen. Svoboda injured his foot. And this kid, Nenema, he's playing an outstanding game. He's Last everywhere. Game play in the second period. Red Wings bring it back. Slava Batisov gives it across. Larionov's pass misfires. Sandstrom in for it. Ran by Terrian. And the puck came over to Codine. Moving back out with Otto and he clears it back down. Uh, so far, a super penalty kill. No setup time at all for Detroit. Here's Iserman walking it ahead. To the last 17 of the power play. Iserman put it behind. Hedema wrapped it back off. McCarty with a pass, and that one right into the path of Bruce. John Drews back with eight left on his team's kill. Just holds and drops it in, and then he's rammed by McCarty. With Platt in the penalty box, Drews gets a chance to penalty kill, and what a great job he did. Boy, will he ever see a lot of ice in the third. Samuelson intercepts and banks it back out. The team's at full strength. And the second period is about. Does not kill penalties very often when into the locker room. 
Now, in the last game of the Rangers series, during the second intermission, he took an IV to get fluids back into his system. You wonder if it's happening again right here. 80% of these Stanley Cup finals. Detroit is two-thirds of the way there, but that's just two-thirds. The butt ice statistics and the singing that accompanies it. Shots on goal, 20 Detroit, 19 Philadelphia. The scoring chance is even. Face-offs, an edge to Philadelphia that's not as dominant as it was before. The penalty box, empty. Flyers have had six odd man rushes, one goal. That was a three on two. Detroit's had four odd man rushes. They have three goals. So you can see how they've gotten there. Svoboda, by the way, the defenseman has returned and is on the ice right now to start this third period. The other thing is the Flyers want, they want more skating from their team. They feel they only skated well in the last five minutes of the second period. They want the legs going. McClare angle. Right around by Malpe. Ricochet back down. It'll be an icing call. Sent over half the length and touched, as it is now, by the non-offending team. Now, did Eric Lindros make a statement at the start of the third period as he got rid of his opposite center, Chris Draper? No penalty called on the play. This starts the third period. A shot, another shot, another shot. Draper down, no penalty. Detroit bench was looking for one. But Bill McCreary will let him go. Now, Detroit, they feel going into the third that they have to stay out of the penalty box. The fans will be into it. If a flyer throws a body check, Scotty Bowman does not want his players retaliating and taking a penalty and putting the flyers on the power play. Great traditions in this matchup. The tradition of Clark and Barber and Leach and Howe and Lindsay and Abel in successful years. Those years were quite some time ago. Even though Ted Lindsay still has a locker stall in Joe Louis Arena, he works out there so often. Murphy with a shot. That one loose in front, and it kicked over to LeClaire. John LeClaire up with Renberg, but that one just punched calmly aside by the defense. The three on two that didn't work. Myers changing, Iserman shooting, he scores! Now the Flyers had a three on two, Mike. Moved up ice. Both defensemen were back for Detroit. The fans of Detroit celebrating early in the third with a two goal lead. Now LeClaire blocked a shot in his own zone right here. Blocks it. Now the Flyers with Svoboda in on the play. Three on two. But watch the pass here that doesn't work. Oh man, LeClaire made the great block, but the bad pass. Detroit recovers. The Flyers changing and a bad goal on Hextall. He's beaten from just inside the blue line with Needham at back. There's the shot, no deflection. Hextall gets beat for a bad one, and the Red Wings have the two-goal lead. Undoubtedly triggers memories of Steve Eiserman's blast in the second overtime of Game 7 last year in the playoffs against St. Louis. Hextall got some sarcastic applause for that grab. Hey. Brenda Moore bringing it ahead. Watched by Petison. It's fed back down. It's fifth in the playoffs. The assist number 55, Larry Murphy. And the icing touch up. Larry Murphy got the lone assist on the goal by Iserman. And Murphy having now a game where he has two assists. He, on each one assist on each of the last two Detroit goals as Murphy and Lidstrom have done a great job against the Legion of Doom line. Another look at the shot on the goal by Iserman. You see the screen set up by Ninema. It doesn't touch him. And you see Hextall going down as the puck caroms off the stick and up inside the net. Hextall was caught going down. He wasn't down, he wasn't up. He was in between in transition and Iserman beat him with a long shot. This is Podine in a save made by Mike Vernon. So over a minute and a half played in the third. Bob Rouse walking it ahead, shooting, and it went wide. An 83 mile an hour shot. Rouse in, jousting away for it, but it's held to the boards and play stopped. Do you believe in omens? Entering the third period when Detroit has a lead, they've won all six times. And when the Russians figure in a scoring play, they've won 12. When the Russians don't, they've lost all four. Do you believe in Omen? Oh. <laughs> You're a goaltender. Thanks. You don't believe in that stuff. The fans sometimes do. Things can change. Scotty Bowman has won 174.
playoff games, trying to make a 175. Terry Murray has won 46 playoff games in his career. Again, look of concern. He's now scrambling. What do I do? How do I get my combinations? How much does Lindros play? Twisting back with it, Brindamore. Svoboda playing a little catch. Ward and Rouse, the defense combination for Detroit. Pretty good hit by LaPointe on Brindamore. Flyers have to regroup, and it's Svoboda. Flipping it away from Rouse. Lofted back out by Ward. That's what Detroit does. The Flyers are ready for it. A lot of those flip outs. Taking the puck and elevating it so high in the air, it buys time, and you don't ice the puck. Our chuck shot is answered by Vernon. Zubris trying to flip it through. Dumped off by Rouse. Coffee shooting! And he got the glass. And all the way back down. Well, you can pitchfork that puck back out a lot more confidently with a two-goal advantage than with just a one. Margin for error on everything. Gets a lot better thanks to that goal by Detroit's captain. It is Coffee. The shots are 21 apiece. John LeClaire bringing it ahead. Fed one, hoping for Lindros, and he got him, but he put it off the outside of the goal. Jab back near Lindros, sealed up for a moment by Koser. Circling is Renberg, but the pass trickled on to a Detroit stick. Larry Murphy tried to rifle it out, but it kicked over to LeClaire. LeClaire started it ahead for Eric Lindros to LeClaire! Ninety four miles an hour on that Leclerc shot and Mike Vernon was in perfect position. It was a given goal Leclerc to Lindros back to Leclerc a real quick release and Mike Vernon makes a big save. See there's Leclerc on the puck the give to Lindros and the goal now the puck back a beautiful pass and there's the slap shot from halfway between the blue line and the top of the circle Vernon played out so far that the shot was only twenty four and a half feet. That it had to travel, but Vernon had perfect position. That's a huge save. Konstantinov to Fatisov. Chipped around, but not out. The big boys are out for Philadelphia right now. That one squibbed away from Desjardins. Cording and Lacroix and Terrian on defense with that hit on Sandsburg. They continue to rough it up on the boards. Two aside battling, and play is stopped. And above the four men in a quarter, Lacroix and McCarty were going at each other. Detroit's been very disciplined with only sending two men to the puck. Only two men in there. The third man is way back to help out the defense. This is on the four check. Now, if there's a setup where Philadelphia wants to come out of the zone after they set up behind the net, that's when the Red Wings use that fame system we're talking about, the left wing lock. So Philadelphia have to win a puck battle in their own zone, and then they have to move up the ice to get through three people. Where did that left wing lock come from? Czechoslovakia, when it was Czechoslovakia, it's now the Czech Republic years ago, not Russia. A lot of people think it was the Russian system. The Russian system is center iceman back. The Czechs used a left wing back years ago, and it's now developed into a lot of different countries, including Sweden using it. Barry Smith, the assistant coach for this team, brought it from Sweden. On now with it is Howard Chuck. Fed one across the net, mouth wide. Terry flipped one that came back to Zubris. Off the wall for Desjardins. Fed a high screamer on the wrist shot that was off the glass. Terry cranked it well wide, and it hopped away from Howard Chuck. Taken by Thomas Sandstrom. Off Iserman stick, rammed by Ninema. And still they battle. It came to Fatisov, then it crossed to Konstantinov. And back in. So nearly four and a half minutes played in the third period. The big event of the period, a slap shot by Steve Eiserman, off Ron Hextall and in. From about 60 feet. Murphy assisted at 56 seconds, and Detroit got a two-goal lead. Hextall sets and Ninema there. Nearly wrapped up from behind by Brown. It's swept back over for a drop. But Detroit with good coverage, though it's knocked away for a play to be made by Otto. Hung up at the line, but followed through on. There's just no room. No room for the Flyers. Save made by Vernon on the shot from Podine. 
Orloff scaled it back down, and there'll be another icing stoppage of play. And this is where Philadelphia might get some offense in winning a faceoff quickly in the Detroit zone, something that Eric Lindros can do a lot of, which could lead to offense. Barry, Barry Smith, Smith, the guy we mentioned, will be involved in picking the Swedish Olympic team for Nagano in 98. You know, one player he really wants on the team is Renberg, who's playing in this game on a Legion of Doom line. He didn't play in the World Cup this last fall, and he'll certainly help the Olympic squad for Sweden. Well, that hopefully that ankle of his will be healed by then. You know, he showed me yesterday the inside of his left ankle. It's like he's got a golf ball taped to it from the inflammation. They call it skate bite. The skates have tightened so much that has caused inflammation and swelling. And at the end of the playoffs, he'll have surgery to correct it. There's that offense and the possibility of it. Shanahan with a great block. Lindros won the draw. The shot was blocked. Four shots to one Philadelphia in the period. But the one by the Red Wings is the one that went in and gave them the two goal cushion. Tell you, it's amazing to see Renberg keep this well with that big swelling and inflammation alongside of his ankle. This one chopped ahead and Shanahan just helps it further. Comes obediently to the bench on a change of lines. It's angled back for Larry Murphy. Angled over for LaPointe. Martin LaPointe. Larry on off to LaPointe and a rising shot got the glass. Now Niedemann had to play because of Maltby. Lindros with a club move on Fatisov and a second one. Yeah, when the flyer gets a puck, there's a Red Wing right there. So there's just no space and no time. And, and the Flyers can't skate the puck. It's what happened to Colorado in the last round. Now, we talked about Flyers' best chance for offense, maybe winning a faceoff. But watch Shanahan get out to block the shot. We'll roll it, and it will stop it. Now, you, you stop it there. You saw the clean win. Lindros is going to the net, but the man down there is Shanahan. His teammate got out to block the shot. Great job. There he is. Lindros wins it clean, but no clean shot because Shanahan battled out there. Offensive zone faceoffs for the Flyers. They've won 12 of 20. All right, now here's another one. Brindamore can win the draw clean back to Ninema, but watch and see if he does, if the shot gets through, if Draper gets beat. It's to the wall and Zubris. Chopped that, but right to Draper. Angled back off, but kept by Ninema. Then on to Brindamore. Draper into him. Fatis off into Zubris. Konstantinov tested in the wall by Bruce. No room. No room. Zubris, look at this young man. 18 years old, not even 19. And there he threw down 39-year-old Slava Fatisov. As this kid who now has his brother in town, takes care of his family from the Eastern Bloc. And so now the faceoffs are really starting to mount here. Mike in the third period in the Detroit zone. Detroit, any kind of trouble, they're icing the puck. Any kind of trouble, they're freezing it up for a draw. Well, now it'll be, I would think, auto for the draw. Direction is Howard Chuck playing center ice now on a shift. First time he's played center ice in this game on a line. We are and seeing some changes from start to finish he's here. He's in place of auto. Howard Chuck's way more offensive than auto. So the Flyers playing the percentages here, trying to get some offense going. And there's a hit from behind on Svoboda. On McCarty, Svoboda will get the penalty in Detroit with a two-goal lead. will have themselves a power play with 13.33 to go in the third. Three, five shots. Svoboda sits. A cross-check from behind in the offensive zone. That hurts his club. Now, Fedorov's not playing the point here, Mike. Detroit has a two-goal lead in the third period. They want defensemen on the blue line, not a forward. Well, they have defensemen. Larry Murphy handles it now. It's handed back over for Kozlov. The other defenseman is Lindstrom. Larry Onoff just looking things over. A stick broken by Tarion, and a shot was saved by Hextall. He got the blocker on it as Larry Murphy sent it toward him. Odin tried to swagger in, could not. Brought back up by Brendan Shanahan. Detroit with a two-goal lead and on the power play. Brendan Moore has two shorthanded goals in the playoffs. John Drew says one, and the Flyers would love one here. Shanahan lobs it on through. Kozlov got it on back to Murphy. Fires a shot off of Hextall High. Kozlov dropped it on. It's fed to the back by Fedorov for Murphy. Close quarters to Lindstrom. Cut off by Trent Platt. 
Been sent back down by Brindamore. Trent Platt took away the passing line, lane, pardon me, the passing lane. Terry Murray talked about Detroit with diagonal passes on the power play. He wants his penalty killers to get the sticks in the passing lane, and Trent Platt, he did just that. This is better off. Bennett in front, away from Iserman, but to the point. Banged it back off for Iserman. No one in front yet, and it went off his stick. Better off pointed it on back for Slava Fatisov. Better off again, Indy Weiserman out front, and a shot, and the rebound was blocked down. Boy, just the walk right in by Iserman, and a big shot is blocked away by Desjardins. Iserman again with it, dealt it on in for LaPointe. He looks to Fatisov inside the box, better off, waves, and it's jammed away by Desjardins. Roaring back in on a ship change now. Konstantinov's shot is called back on an off. And the Flyers making him notice that he took the shot on the whistle. Flyers didn't like that. Oh, Detroit now playing Fedorov up front on the power play. So they don't take a chance defensively with a two-goal lead. Look at Fedorov here. He's waiting, waiting, waiting. And the Flyers will get caught chasing on this side of the ice. Fedorov will find the lane and get open. Look at him. He wants the puck. He finds the lane. He moves. There it is. Doesn't shoot it as Hextall challenged him. And then the pass across did not work. Wow. Now Detroit earlier, here's Eiserman moving in two on one. Pass across. The puck does not settle for the point on the far side with Hextall down. Detroit very close on their power play. Only two seconds to go now for Peter Svoboda in the box. 11.35. Svoboda released. The teams are back at full strength. Philadelphia down by two as Coffey gets it along for Shell Samuelson. From the glass, it came to Draper. Hit one of those glass supports. Draper trying to work it along, cannot. Kubota swept it, but still the battle on. Malfi jousted a little bit from behind by LeClaire. Now Lindros. Fires it back down. LeClaire got there, so no icing. LeClaire trying to fight his way, but can't. The Red Wings out, man, but it's off one of those glass supports again. Lidstrom brings it ahead. Larry Murphy walks it further and lobs it in deep. Shift change Detroit. Philadelphia already has. Well, Lindros now, second half of his shift, seeing Konstantinov and Fatisov knock Murphy as a two-line pass, and that squashes the offense again for the Flyers. Not a lot of activity in that crowd, you see. But back in Detroit, they've been watching this on Joe Vision, and they're pretty happy. That's a live picture. 20,291 here. They've been averaging around 11,000 to watch. And here's Shanahan, a shot save made by Hextall right off the faceoff. A splendid Detroit chance. And a splendid save by Ron Hextall as he keeps his team alive with ten and a half minutes to go in the third. The point nubbed it ahead. Larry on off a shot, and that deflected wide. Tarion wrapped up from behind. But it's helped back out again for a flyer rush. Rod Brindamore bringing it on. Gets over to Drews. A lost off his stick. They work it in deep. Matisoff punched it off. Drews' stick to neutralize. Larry on off. Jostled off by Ninema. Off of Zubris. And deep. Halfway through the third period. Larry on off. Passes it over to Matisoff. Very deliberately rolls it back in, and so the Flyers have to turn and take it. Peter Svoboda guided it across for Nina. And Scotty Bowman's already got Murphy and Lidstrom on the ice. Now comes the big line for the Flyers. The matchup continues. Eric Lindros is in, had trouble controlling. Saints from on him. Now John LeClaire turning with it. LeClaire wanted to get to the front. Larry Murphy in the way. LeClaire out the front, knocked off his stick. And it hit the outside of the net. He knocked off the stick by Lidstrom. They're playing the stick and the puck, not so much the body. The equalizer. They're giving up so much height and weight. An average of around 18 pounds and an inch and a half by the Detroit defense whenever they have to face Windrush and McClare. Here comes the hit. No, oh, not too bad. I thought Murphy was going to get nailed, but he's so smart he avoided it. Desjardins. Lindros flips, second effort fails, swept back out again by Kozlov and down for an icing touch. And this has to be so frustrating for the big flyer line of Renberg, Leclerc, and Lindros. The work is there, they just can't find the offensive chances. Detroit's splendid.
Ronnie Hextall makes a big save here. We'll see Shanahan right here sneak in. Watch Larianov with a nice little pass right here. One on one, Shanahan gets stopped by Ronnie Hextall. Eric Lindros has tried to move the body. He has not had much room there. He's got Sandstrom with him. He tries to break loose and does. And then he's got Murphy on him. Here he's reaching out, trying to hit Murphy, and Murphy avoided most of the bump. Larry Murphy's had a strong game, plus has two assists. Eric Lindros, his club trails by two goals, and time winding down. This is Fedorov, who has one of the Red Wing goals. If the Red Wings win this, the backbreaker will have been the long drive by Iserman off Hextall early in this period. Walby and Koser have also scored for Detroit. Brindamore and LeClaire have connected for the Flyers. Eight and a half to go, third period. Detroit has kept this defense pairing away from Lindros. Kraus and Ward, they played well, but very, very little ice time when the Lindros line has been out there. Very little time against them. The big line reunited again. Renberg, Leclerc, Lindros. Two assists for Lindros. One goal by Leclerc, one assist by Renberg. And the goal itself was a play which developed into a three on two late in the second. Other than that, as a, at even strength, no sustained offense, no room. They just been squashed and, and smothered by Scotty Bowman's game plan here so far. 8.18 to go. And this line could crank it open at any time. Out of what's been about 50 minutes, a little more tonight, about how many of those minutes would you guess the Flyers really got their forecheck going the way they wanted to? Very little. One thing about this game to this point, when Detroit looks back, their defensemen have not been punished. Very little. The big hit was by Klatt on Fatisa, but he took a penalty on it in the second period. Lacroix banned on the shot, but controls and put one in front. It's the backhand attempt, and somehow Vernon came up with it. They see again, Mike. Another chance for Philadelphia, but it's on the faceoff. They win a draw. They find some loose pucks. Lacroix missed a shot, but found the puck. Got it back in front. Otto was there. Watch here. Lacroix doesn't get the shot there, but he fights and recovers and gets the puck. Again, he loses it. Again, he recovers it. Now watch the Flyers in front. Big guys, including Otto, and Detroit's got all six players there again in front of the net. They're collapsing so low around Mike Vernon. All the Red Wings are there, and Vernon's able to hang on to it. We have Fatisov on Otto, Konstantinov, so they're all there. Another face-off. From the tie-up, Joe Koser brings it out. Koser Pester got it across to Chris Draper, who lobbed it back. Iserman, having won the faceoff, has come to the bench. The changing continues. Draper got out of the way of most of the hits coming from Coffey. Joel Otto has to get help. Desjardins provides it. 7.45 to go third period. The Flyers need two, and they have to keep Detroit off the board further. Brindamore, and that one ricocheted, and out of play near the Detroit bench. Konstantinov and Lindros meet up here because Lindros is being double shifted. Look at the space and the time. Every time a flyer is near the puck, there's just no room. No room. You've got to earn the room. You try to do it with quickness. And there's one of the few times where those two players have matched up in this game. Who would have thought it would have been Lindstrom and Murphy spending so much time? We were all thinking Konstantinov, as, as often as he can be out there, he'll be out no. there. Well, it's been two-thirds of the time the other way. Detroit threw us a curve, and the idea, I guess, is, is not to get Lindros mad and be in his face and, and cause that type of game. And basically, they just played the puck, played his stick, and not giving them any room to this point for the big guy. Lindstrom scaled it back down. There'll be no icing on this one. Shots in the period are six to four. Flyers. 25 24 in the game. Meaningless now because the Flyers trail by two. LeClaire jams one. Aaron Ward came up with it. And the rookie out of the University of Michigan just lobbed it back down. Now Tarion again. Murphy. And again, the Flyers must recoil. And Lindros is coming on the ice every second shift. Every second shift now here in the third, he's on the ice. Larry Murphy again. Murphy jammed it on, but it's Zubris. Nice move to shake some checking coffee, but it could not be finessed through by LeClaire. Tries again. Third time, and he put it in on goal from center ice. 
Vernon angled it back. Iserman just laid it back out again, and then he was smeared by Lindros. Iserman slow to get up, comes to the bench. Meanwhile, Trophy is back. Then Lindros across for a shot by Svoboda that went off a leg. Now Renberg behind for Lindros again. Duels with the Tisaw. Lindros nearly ran into the player. Not much room there with four bodies behind the net. Cole Coffey kept it alive. Renberg with a little trouble, flipping it, but Batisov there. Batisov nearly outmanned, but it's ripped back off. Renberg threw it behind. Lindros battling for it there. Batisov won that battle, gets it back again, got it onto Fedorov, scaled off the glass, and threw Coffey and down. And You'll all see. of that time, Moore ticks off the clock. Every time Detroit comes up the board, the fire defense now will pitch and try to keep it in. They've got to try to keep plays alive. Lindros across! Oh, what a play made by Vernon as he got the glove on the shot! I think Mike, I honestly thought Lindros would shoot. He made a pass across to Klatt, who took a stride, then the shot. And a two-on-one save by Mike Vernon, just a gigantic save. Two on one, here it is. Klotz on the far side, Vernon takes two strides and the save is made. Oh. Remember in the second period, Vernon couldn't take two strides because Leclerc shot and scored. Watch Vernon, one step, two steps, it took Klotz too long to shoot. And by the time he shot, there was Mike Vernon, glove extended, the save of the game, in the catcher's mitt. The save of the game so far. Vernon, one stride, two strides, glove out, there it is, as he robs Trent Klatt. Not a goal scorer, but he got into position and was flat out robbed, the save of the game. What a wonderful look at it, especially that last one, because it was headed in until Vernon had the glove out. Chipped by LaPointe and read by Terrian. The big defenseman clumps it back in. Bob Rouse with it. Bob Rouse, who broke up a two-on-one that the Flyers had when the score was closer in the second. Oh, and hit by baby. Konstantin off on Platt. Oh, baby, did he hit him. Platt is shaking a little bit. He's a little woozy. Konstantinov now is throwing the hit of the game. Platt threw one earlier on Batisov and took a penalty. This time, Platt will cut to the middle and, oh, shoulder into the chest and man did he catch him he's a big hitter 11th rounder oh there's a collision and a clean one and Klatt was a little woozy on the play back in 86 world championships Konstantinov played center ice shut down Marcel Dion the great Hall of Fame goal scorer in the series but here in the NHL, he plays defense and throws big hits, and that was one right there. What a tribute paid to him by Ted Lindsay. Quote, he could play in any era. End of quote. You could say the same thing about Eric Lindros, too, couldn't yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. They both remind me a little bit about Gordie Howe. Off the faceoff, Spar diving for it that time and eventually getting help with Shanahan. The point cleared it back. LeClaire allows it to go to Lindros, and he put it back in. Vernon behind. Delve around, but there is Nenema. Renberg could not get it. Lifted off the glass. Now LeClaire up with it. Feeds it back to the point. Terry in there. Terry and wrists one. Spiked away by Murphy. Another attempt by Nenema fails. Lindros over. Locked up by Koser. Flyers are getting the puck deep a lot now. A lot of times. And here we have an icing again as Lindros is being held up by Joe Koser. Koser's trying to get a stick back. There's now a whistle for icing. And alignsman Ray Scampanello has to look way up to break him up. Oh, that's a live shot and a few people are leaving. 4.37 left and the home team down by two. Game two on ESPN here Tuesday. At Joe Louis Arena, ESPN, Thursday and June 7th, if necessary, back here on Fox June 10 and June 14 for a seventh game, sandwiched around Game 6 on ESPN at Detroit on June 12th. You know, Gary Thorne and Billy Clement have a lot of fun doing those games. John Saunders and Barry Melrose and Command Center. If they have, have fun, guys. Yeah, if they have half as much as we've had watching all the hitting and the exciting plays, it'll be a picnic worth waiting for for them, too. Five or six straight minutes of... Uh, a play deep in the Detroit zone as the Flyers press late. 4.20 to go. Iserman breaks it up. It's McCarty to Iserman in front, waiting, and the shot went off Hextall. And we get a stoppage of play. This time, whoa, a 
shot taken late by Fatisov that hit somebody well after the whistle. Well after the whistle. And that's brought really the first scrum of the hockey game. The first one where everybody's in against each other. The very first time. A late, late, late shot. I believe it was Fatisov that hit somebody. And that's created some animosity. Tell you what. Ronnie Hextall, I think, made a big save here. He has allowed a bad goal early in the third, but he's made a couple of saves as the period has moved along. Here's the turnover. Coffee can't get to it. Turned over as Maltby forced to play. Now, there's no shot right here, but watch Hextall go down, yet stay up with his chest. And then there, made the save with his foot. Quick whistle. And for some reason, Fatisov took the extra shot. He'll probably say he didn't hear the whistle, but... But he certainly did shoot the puck late, and that got everybody's attention. Ronnie Hextall made a fine save to allow the Flyers to have any type of chance here yet. They're trail by two, 4-2 four two with 4.13 to go. Now, during the exchange, Eric Lindros had a problem with his helmet. Well, that'll have to be repaired or get a new one from the locker room or boy, play without. Boy, he just changed helmets earlier this year. He went to a different style. His brother retired because of concussions. At a very young age, the newer Bauer helmet's got a lot more padding and a lot more protection. Back to play with 4.13 to go. Third period, Detroit wins the faceoff. The big line, the fourth line now on the ice for Philly. They've actually had a couple of scoring chances. John Bruce has had a couple of chances. Go! Go! Daniel Lacroix and Dan Cordick are the other members of that front line. Detroit does not respond with their grind line. They have the lead. They want to make sure that they're in a prevent. Svoboda hands it on back to Shell Samuelson. Crowd getting restless now. Broken up by Lindstrom a second time. Turned on by Shanahan, who's walled by Cordy. Flyers will be looking at game tapes and game tapes and game tapes to try to figure out the system that Detroit has to try to find a way to crack it. The Stanley Cup champions of a year ago couldn't. That's the Colorado Avalanche. Will the Flyers be able to? Big shot by McCarty was off the mark. Moving in as Maltby. Bumped by Niedema, and Niedema came up with it. Pass taken by Rod Brindamore. Brindamore run off, and again, it's played back in by Draper with 3.10 to go. Paul Coffey just pitch forks a backhander out that's gloved down. Trying to play it ahead was Batiste off. Howard Chuck tried to play it back in, and Maltby was in the way. Draper. Again, what John has been saying all night, no room, and then hit from behind across the way was Maltby. It's starting to get nasty a little bit now, and this will set up for game two of the series for sure. Lindros here in the third period just trying to find space. This was the opening faceoff. Draper was knocked down. This is in behind the net. He'll get rid of his check Sandstrom to find some open ice. Here he, oh man, what a hit that was on Steve Eiserman. Then here with Koser. Koser's pinning him, and there's four different elbows by Lindros to try and free up some space and just can't. Now he's waiting for his helmet so he can get back onto the ice as we have a slight delay and some broken pieces of a stick being cleaned up off the ice surface by the linesman. There's his helmet going back, and there's the, the pieces. Ray Scapanello has been unbelievable. 26 years, this is his 15th Stanley Cup final. What an amazing record this guy has had, and how many games has he worked over all of those 26 years? 2019 and 329 playoff games. He's got a cleanup job to do because of that. Ross check to the back of Fatisov, breaking the stick of Brindamore and the stoppage. Tonight's game one of the 1997 Stanley Cup Finals, produced by Richard Zients, directed by Sandy Grossman. Pre-game show and intermissions produced by Nancy Bernstein and directed by Artie Kempner. Thanks also to technical producer Dean Walker and the outstanding Fox technical staff. Senior producer of Fox Sports is Bill Brown, the executive producers Ed Gorin and David Hill. And special thoughts to Bob Siderman, who is sidelined from our crew, but we will look forward to his return. All the best to him from all of us here in Philadelphia. So it is off the stick of Vernon. And with... Vernon, Vernon didn't handle the puck there, Mike. That cost a big hit on one of his defensemen. It swept along, and Iserman chipped it back out. Taken now by Svoboda and cranked back in, but it caught a teammate in early, and so an offside. You know, Mike Vernon, I think, has really handled the puck well. It's not his strength. Glenn Hall, the former, I mean, one, maybe the greatest goaltender of all time, 
coached Mike Vernon in Calgary. He said, Mike, don't handle the puck too much. Just don't. Stay in the net. But here in this game, you'll see here, has trouble with the puck. Watch him slam a stick on the ice. There, he's upset because Murphy gets hit. He didn't handle the puck well to set it up for Murphy. But I really think overall, with the Flyers dumping the puck in, Vernon has handed it off like a quarterback to a running back in football. He's handed the puck off real well. Svoboda tried to put it in front, and Lindstrom with the kneeling block. Out in front again, and Larry Murphy up with it. And again, it's angled back out. That's, that's interesting, too. These, these Detroit forwards are just jumping right in front of Mike Vernon, not worried about the flyer defenseman. And it's like a trap in front of Vernon's net. My goodness, Lindros pretty well had Constantino obscured. And took a penalty doing it. A roughing call. Lindros goes to the box with 2.12 to go in this third period in Detroit with a two-goal lead. Oh, another offensive zone penalty. Frustrating penalty for the Flyers. Lindros with a stick. Misses the body of Konstantinov. But got the jersey. Now watch Konstantinov holding the stick of Lindros. That's uh, a love tap. Lindros has a stick held. A love tap to the jaw. But Lindros took the penalty. A one-man advantage, a two-goal lead. The rough at 17:48, just 2:12 to go. And some of the hopeful 20,000 plus, 20,291, are starting to leave. We mentioned earlier, about four out of every five is won by the winner of Game One. But boy, I think game two is the game that means so much, especially to Philadelphia now. Because if they don't win this one, and it's a problem Bob Clark has seen in his time as a player as well as an executive. If they don't win this one, they have to win the next one. Otherwise, that means they'd have to win four out of five, including three games at Joe Louis Arena in Detroit. But that's an if. The Flyers are down by two and shorthanded by a man with 2.12 to go. Well, they'll come back in battle in game two of this series. It'll be desperation time. If they don't come back to win this thing, it'll be desperation time. The Flyers will play hard. They've got to break the system. It's something they just have to do. They also gave up three goals with odd man rushes against. The other goal was the long shot by Eisenman, which really hurt the Flyers here early. Larry Onoff in front. Some punishment is LaPointe. It's fed along for a shot by Shanahan. Stopped and covered by Hextall. The LaPointe will go to the front and take all kinds of attention, and that opens up the ice for Shanahan, who will move around and face the passer. That time he had a great chance for a good shot, but he didn't get the good shot. He flat out missed it. And it was an easy save for Hextall. Before that, though, LaPointe was robbed with the turnover again, the pass across, and watch LaPointe take the shot. And Hextall got across and robbed him. Hextall's had a good third grade other than the bad goal early. Now LaPointe will get attention here, and he'll want the attention to open up the ice. And he, as this is happening, Shanahan will find open ice, and then he gets the weak shot. Big shot by Lindstrom is saved by Hextall, and Rod Brindamore brings it out. One minute, 20 seconds to go. Flyer still shorthanded for a minute seven. Rushing in is Iserman. Iserman is shot, pad stop Hextall. Lifted along by LeClaire. The Red Wings will drop back. Down to the last minute five. Boy, your thoughts turn to that lightning-like glove of Mike Burton. Stopping a two-on-one. What a play. If you see that one going in, then it's an altogether different game. That was a catching glove save on Platt. Craig Platt moved in with Lindros. Lindros set him up beautifully. Platt took a little bit too much time to shoot. Vernon got across and made the save of the game, in my opinion. 26 left on the power play. And it's all the done. Eric Desjardins plays it on to Svoboda. Tipped along further. Sent along further by Rouse. Svoboda drops back. Six left on the Lindros minor. 16 left in regulation. Draper starting ahead. He's got Shanahan, but his double team that muscled out of the play. It's lifted back along. Lindros is out of the box. LeClaire on to him with five left in the tilt. And the Detroit Red Wings have won game one of the Stanley Cup Finals. Last score of four to two and a little extra after the horn. It's a frustrating.
frustration with the big man Eric Lindros. Detroit comes into this game with a good game plan executed all the way through. Larry Murphy and Nicholas Lidstrom, the two defensemen, were outstanding. They played against Lindros at even strength all game long. Murphy had two assists. That defense pairing did the job. Our new Dodge player of the game is Larry Murphy. That is Joe Louis Arena. We'll be back here in Philadelphia with James Brown right after these words. So that one win gave the cherished home ice back to the wings, the visiting team in Philadelphia. Detroit and the Flyers wouldn't play again for three nights. Plenty of time to sit and wait and think about what may be on the horizon. Game one set the tone. Thanks for watching. I'm John Keating.